Okay, so next up we're going to talk about the other striking feature and difference between the different four designs and that is the presence of a central bulb. Now the America's Cup design rule is really interesting because the boats are designed to be self-writing and to get a lot of leverage from these foils. So there's actually 921 kilos of weight out there. So obviously some of that has to be stored somewhere and some of it is invariably in a bulb. Let's talk about the pros and cons of that solution. I think that actually brings us on to the next point. That's the other big kind of visual difference and that's the size of the bulb on the foils. In the previous video, we covered it in that there's a huge amount of weight to be carried in these foils and foil system really, you know, the whole kind of like arm fairing, everything. You can change 80, you can change 20%, 80% has to stay the same. So that means if you put a, a solid heavy bulb in the middle, you can change more of the wings. So there's a certain development ap aspect to that, I think, that we saw with the earlier boats where, you know, there's a preference to having a large bulb and then being able to tweak around more with the arms. Certainly Luna Rossa and American Magic, we, we, we saw that. Um, what about the bulb situation now? What, what are we seeing with the different, different teams, Tom? Well, you've basically got two options. Uh, to get this, to get the weight and the ballast into the foils, you've got the central bulb which you've covered, um, which some there's a right variety of sizes, um, or you've got uh, the blended wing body method, which is very similar to the Ineos wing, which is much more triangulated and has a much more, it, it looks more like a wing for the entirety of its surface. The blended wing body basically allows you to have you, almost all of your wing acting as a lifting body. Um, it typically has a lower drag than a bulb wing configuration, um, especially when you're constrained by the maximum span as you are in these rules. Um, but what ends up happening is you end up having a much wider root cord um, so and, and then this starts building into like your plan form shape. So actually, you have a, you have to have a much wider root cord to house your mechanisms, um, which means you end up with a more triangulated plan form uh, with a higher taper ratio, which is not as good from a drag perspective as say uh, the more slender wings of uh, Team New Zealand. And I think this again it comes much very much down to a mechanical as a me much of, as much of a mechanical engineering challenge as there is a hydrodynamic. The one other benefit for the um, the blended uh, wing body method is that you can because your root cord is mu much wider, you can actually have a, a lower percentage thickness aerofoil section, um, which in, it does give you a slight drag. Uh, drag coefficient benefit. So let's talk about what we see with with the teams at the moment. I mean, certainly, American Magic have the largest and most well defined bulb, and one of the smallest foil areas. So that's um, that's one point. And then we go into into Emirates Team New Zealand, whose first foils didn't have any bulb at all. It was it you know it looked almost you know like a just complete section the whole way through um, so a bit of a query of where the where the weight went there uh, but they've slowly developed this kind of blended bulb body on the on the Emirates boat and it's actually the bulbs have kind of got more defined over over time and the, probably the difference between their third and fourth foil which were kind of asymmetric on the boat it was one side had a more defined bulb than the other and the other side had a more blended and now they've brought out the final set which have um, have pretty obvious uh, kind of bulb sections at, at the front and then we go then we start to move out to the, to the big boys which you know don't really have a defined bulb in any way the, a bit of a nose bump but that's it and a bit of a tail bump but es effectively it's all just a lifting surface for Luna Rossa and Ineos yeah and I guess like you said it, it, we're going to talk about the mechanics of the flaps as well, but bear in mind, people, you've got a, a, 
a lot of weight to fit into these balls, but also where are you articulating the flaps from? You know, it's done by battery, which then goes into a hydraulic system, and then that comes down the foil arm, and are you ha housing mechanisms in the bulb, in which case, and you know, turning the flaps from there, or are you actually taking the hydraulics out into the foil arms, and articulating flaps at that point. So there's there's a, definitely a philosophy around the, the uh, kind of mechanical engineering as to how's, how's best to kind of streamline that whole kind of whole system, where to put the weight, where to put the mechanics. So it was one of the thing about the, um, the inboard end with the bulbs. Well, is there a benefit there that it can kind of end plate? Yeah, so, so I mean, I think lo looking at the foil problem that the bulb is effectively a necessary evil from a hydrodynamic point of view like ideally you would have a minimal bulb purely to prevent cavitation and that would be that but these guys aren't in a position where they can design the foil that they ideally want so so the weight requirement for these foils all stems back to the requirement originally that the boat's going to be self-writing in a capsize so it's to get central gravity low enough. Um, but one, once you get to that position where you have to decide, this is effectively what my ideal foil is, but now I've got to squeeze this extra weight in it. Well, you've only got a few choices then. You either have to make the wings bigger than they currently are, or you've got to put a bulb in the middle, or you've mm. got to do something that it's a bit of a hybrid of the two. And and in simple terms, those are your only options. Um, so the question you then start asking yourself is, well, extra, extra wing is really only damaging from an induced point of view, and at least it does generate lift when you need it. Was a bulb actually doesn't really offer you anything other than weight. And the bulb can obviously be used to control that cavitation risk at the inner end, it can be used to end plate the inboard ends of the flaps so that you, you don't get a pressure loss around the ends of those like you can at the wingtip. Um, but the bulb's primary role on these foils is to house the weight, w whether that's lead weight or whether that's hydraulic weight. Or, and I think the other thing that's fairly interesting for, for people is when you actually picture what 921 kilos of lead looks like, that's, that's a box, 43 centimetres each way of solid lead. So get your hammer out and start smashing that into shape and you can kind of see that it, it's not that easy for these guys to get the foils as small as they want and then have have the uh, the weight and also bear in mind that lead's not much use for making anything structural so uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe not as a junction for foil arms no, exactly seven so, and tons of lift. so there's a lot of metal that you've just got to fit in those things to, to get them heavy enough so one of the mysteries for me and i guess um it's obvious to a lot of people and the question is american magic and emirates team new zealand have the smallest foils by area and I think that's that's pretty obvious um, however American Magic has this large bull body whereas Emirates Team New Zealand doesn't they have quite a svelte kind of uh, blended bulb can we speculate on are they using some secret material or is there somewhere else they could have put this weight you've got a vertical that's 700 mil longer just by nature of having a t-foil yeah. mm -hmm. So, whereas American Magic have got the anhedral, Team New Zealand just have a T, so 700 mil of that T is there for them to house additional weight, effectively. Yeah. Um, so that, that helps them a lot. And then also they have these fairings on the, the foil arm. But mm -hmm. I, I'm not clear on how those measure us foil weight, because they're clearly on the foil arm, not on the foil. The fairings have to specifically be outside of the of the foil box, rule box, but the weight of them is included in the rule. So bit of a super weird situation there. Mm. Interesting find. Um, yeah, kind of it does it does free up a little bit of a hole in the rule to 
you know, be doing a lot more than just fairing. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. The, the obvious downside to that is that you're bringing some proportion of the mass of your foil inboard. In, and in that yeah. sense, you're not going to be getting the maximum writing moment that you can possibly get out of those foils from a, on the kind of the windward gravity assisted side of the equation. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I think that brings us to a bit of conclusion with the bulb situation. Um, that's it for today. Next, we're going to be talking about the final, really obvious feature of the different designs, and that's the um, plan area of the foils. So the kind of high aspect versus low aspect ratio, and a little bit about the shape. So some really interesting stuff we can tell about the foils, the design philosophies, and even see it playing out in the race data and how the yachts perform. So catch us next time for that.